Hi everyone, I'm Lab Lloyd Chong from the National Center for Research on Earthquake Engineering and from the Departments of Civil Engineering, National Taiwan University and National Chenggong University. This is my name in Chinese, Zhong Li Lai. Welcome to the course Seismic Evaluation and Retrofit of Structure 3-2. Over at, over at the Department of Construction Engineering, National Taiwan University of Science and Technology. This is the lecture, Preliminary Evaluation 3. In Preliminary Evaluation 1, we learn about seismic capacity of a building. And in Preliminary Evaluation 2, we learn about seismic demand of a building. And in this lecture, preliminary evaluation 3, we will compare the seismic capacity to seismic demand and by considering the conditions of the building, we can come up with the final result of preliminary evaluation. And here's some terminology. Basic seismic performance, Yi, in Chinese, 基本耐震性能, by comparing the capacity to demand ratio, CDR, in Chinese, 容量需求比, then we can have the result, basic seismic performance, in preliminary evaluation. In order to consider the conditions of B, conditions of the building, we have, we have adjustment factor, Q, in Chinese, 调整因子. After, after considering the conditions of the building, then we come up with seismic index, IS, in Chinese, 耐震指标. In order to communicate with the general public, Seismic index can be transformed into performance peak ground acceleration AP, Performance peak ground acceleration is the peak ground acceleration that the building can resist. From seismic design codes of buildings, equation 3-2, we have the design seismic force. Because design seismic force is the minimum requirement to design a building. Therefore, we have this inequality. After arrangement, we arrange the inequality, then we have the division here. The numerator can be considered as seismic capacity of the building equal to 1.4 alpha y v. And the denominator here can be considered as seismic demand equal to I times SAD divided by FU multiplication W. If the capacity to demand ratio is larger than or equal to 1, that means that the building is well designed or the existing building is qualified in seismic performance. Capacity. Capacity is obtained from the vertical members and the summation, the sum of lateral strengths of the vertical member can be obtained from the cross-sectional area of the corresponding vertical members, including reinforced concrete column, reinforced concrete wall, four-side bounded brick wall, and three-side bounded brick wall. Once we have VVM and it is reduced by a factor beta, then we have the base shear strength of the structure, VBS. That's the capacity of the building. And seismic demand is calculated from this formula. I times SAD divided by FU times W. I is the importance factor of the building. SAD is the special acceleration of the building. And FU is seismic force reduction factor of the building due to ductility, and W is the total weight of the building. 
Once we have the capacity and the seismic demand, then we can have the capacity to demand ratio, CDR, or in R, what we call RCD, equal to VBS divided by I times SAD divided by FU multiplication times W. In order to communicate with the general public, so that we magnify RCD by 100 times to have basic seismic performance, E equal to 100 RCD. If E is larger than 100, that means that RCD is larger than 1, the seismic capacity is larger than the seismic demand. So far, the basic seismic performance have not considered the conditions of the building. No matter the condition is good or bad, we have the same size, basic seismic performance for the same building. Therefore, based on the building conditions, the basic seismic performance E is adjusted by the adjustment factors Q, and there are totally six adjustment factors. Q equal to Q1 times Q2 times Q3 times Q4 times Q5 times Q6. And the first factor, Q1, considered consider the irregularity of the building, and Q2 for the soft and weak story of the building, and Q3 for the crack, corrosion, water leakage of the building, and Q4 for the condition of deformation, and Q5 for the condition of redundance, and Q6 for the conditions of short columns. Let us consider the irregularity Q1 first. From seismic design code table 1.2, figure C1-2, C1 this is the plan view of a building in the X direction, along the X direction, we have setback with a dimension LA. And along the Y direction, we have setback WA. If LA divided by L larger than 15% and WA divided by W larger than 15%, then the building is quite irregular and in the shape of L shape. Therefore, we have Q1 equal to 0.95. Therefore, the basic seismic performance is reduced by is reduced to 0.95. Therefore, if setback in both directions are more than 15% of the corresponding direction, Q1 equal to 0 0.95. That means that in the X direction, LA divided by L, larger than 15%. In the Y direction, WA divided by W, larger than 15%. If these two conditions are satisfied, then the building is quite irregular. We have Q1, the adjustment factor, equal to 0.95. If the setback occurs in just one direction, with more than 15% of the corresponding direction, Q1 equal to 1.0. If only one of these two conditions is satisfied, then the irregularity is not that serious. Therefore, we have Q1 equal to 1.0. If setback in both directions are less than 15% of the corresponding direction, that means that LA divided by L less than 15%, WA divided by W less than 15%, that, is the mean, that means that the building is quite regular. Then we have the adjustment factor Q1 equal to 1.05. Then we move to adjustment factor 2, Q2, for soft and weak story. And here is the figure. The wall here is terminated at the second floor. Therefore, we have wall at the, on the second floor and no wall on the first floor. Then in this case, the first floor is soft and weak compared 
to the second floor. Therefore, if more than two thirds of the walls terminate at the floor above, maybe at the second floor, then Q1, Q2, the second adjustment factor, equal to 0.8. If one third to two thirds of the walls terminate at the floor above, then Q2 equal to 0.9. If less than one-third of walls terminate at the second floor, then Q2 equal to 1.0. Then we move to the third adjustment factor for crack, corrosion, and water leakage. If crack, corrosion, and water leakage are serious with concrete sporing, like this picture, concrete spore, and reinforcement exposing. The reinforcement here is exposed to the air and there's some corrosion. Then we consider in this case, the crack, corrosion and water leakage are quite serious. Then we have the adjustment factor Q3 equal to 0.9. If the situation is not that serious, it's moderate, then the adjustment factor Q3 equal to 0.95. If there's no crack, no correction, no corrosion, no water leakage, then the adjustment factor Q3 equal to 1.0. Then we move to the fourth adjustment factor, deformation. And if deformation due to settlement is visible with corresponding cracks, then we have Q4, the adjustment factor Q4 equal to 0.9. Like this picture, no corresponding crack. Maybe the surrounding, there's some settlement in the surrounding. Then we may, mis we may be misled that there's the building, there's, there's a settlement in the building. But if no corresponding crack, that means that the, the deformation is not that serious or no deformation, then Q4, you go to 1.0. And then we move to the next adjustment factor for redundance. And here's classroom and staircase. And there are corridor here. If to the exterior side of the corridor, there's no columns, no columns to the exterior side of the corridor, then Q5 equal to 1.0 because transverse to the corridor, there's only two columns. The redundancy is not that good. The degree of redundancy is not, is not that high. Then Q5 equal to 1.0. If there's a single cor corridor, only one corridor, and with columns at the exterior side, then there, are, there will be one, two, three columns in the transverse direction of the corridor. Then Q5 equal to 1.1. Or we have a central corridor, and to the both sides of the corridor, there are classroom and staircase and restroom. Then, transverse to the corridor, there are totally one, two, three, four, four columns. The redundancy is good. Then we have Q5 equal to 1.1. If there are double corridors, there are two corridors, and both the corridor have, exter have columns at the exterior sides, then Q5 equal to 1.2. The redundancy is so good and the floor area is not that high. Therefore, Q5 equal to 1.2 and transverse, transverse to, the, to the corridor. There are totally 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 columns. Therefore, the redundancy is so high. Then we have the adjustment factor Q5 equal to 1.2. Captive column or short column is, is a column where the clear height is shortened due to openings, doors, or windows. And in this picture, there's a door, opening for door, opening for window. And here's the window shell. The clear height of this column is shorter than this one. Therefore, this column is called captive column. If more than 50% of the columns are captive, 
then the adjustment factor Q6 equal to 0.9. If less than 50% of the columns are captive, then Q6 equal to 1.0. Since only implant strength is considered for the for the window shield or for the openings, for the or for the walls with opening, and all of plane strength is neglected. Therefore, a column may be captive in one direction and may not in the other direction. And take this elevation view as an, as an example. Along the corridor, this column is captive. But transverse to the corridor, this column may not be captive. Once we have the the basic performance, basic seismic performance E, and the adjustment factors, and we multiply these two together, then we can come up with seismic index. Is equal to Q times E, equal to 100 times Q times RCD. RCD is the capacity to demand ratio. If Is is larger than or equal to 100, the building is qualified. If IS lies between 80 and 100, the building is temporarily qualified. If IS is less than 80, then the building is not qualified. The lower the seismic index, the higher the priority to detailed evaluation. And at this moment, we will deal with the building with IS less than 80. Once the building with IS less than, beauty, less than 80 have been completed, then we, we will move to the next stage to handle the building with IS larger than or equal to 80, less than 100. Seal point SDS is seismic is design peak ground acceleration of the building and IS is the seismic index of the building. If IS is 100, then the peak, the performance peak ground acceleration AP just equal to 0.4 SDS. If IS equal to 80, then AP is 80% of the design peak ground acceleration peak ground acceleration. If IS equal to 120, AP, the performance peak ground acceleration is 1.2 times the design peak ground acceleration. Therefore, AP can be calculated by this equation, equal to IS divided by 100 times 0.4 times SDS. And here's a, an example. The building in Yoipu Elementary School. This is the front view. This is the rear view of the building. And this is the plan view of the building with a 14 C1 column. Dimension is 35 by 40 centimeter. And three C2 column. The dimension is 24 by 40 centimeter. And this is the elevation, this is the plan of the building, and this is the reinforcement of the columns and, build and beams. From previous lectures, we already had the seismic capacity, VBS equal to 140.8 ton force, and seismic demand equal to 139.6 ton force. Once we have the seismic capacity and seismic demand, and we compare these two and have capacity to demand ratio. RCD equal to 140.8 divided by 139.6 equal to 1.009. And we multiply RCD by 100. That means that we magnify RCD by 100 and have size, basic seismic performance. E, equal to 100.9 is larger than 100 and the seismic and the basic seismic performance 
has not considered the condition of the building. No matter the condition is good or bad, we have the base, the same basic seismic performance of, of for that building. Now we consider the conditions of the building. The first adjustment factor, irregularity Q1. And from the plan of the building, there's no setback in X direction and no setback in the in Y direction. Therefore, Q1 equal to 1.05. Okay, if setback in both directions are less than 15%, of the corresponding dimension, then Q1 equal to 1.05. Therefore, in this case, for Yuipu Elementary School, the, the school building in Yuipu Elementary School, Q1 equal to 1.05. Then we move to the next adjustment factor, soft and weak story, Q2. There's no walls, no complete or four side bounded brick wall or three side bounded brick wall in the second floor, and also no walls in the first floor. Therefore, no walls terminate at the second floor. Then Q2 equal to 1.0. Q2 is less than one third of the walls terminate at the second floor. Then Q2 equal to 1.0. Therefore, we have Q2 here equal to 1.0. Then we move to the third adjustment factor, Q3. By observing the, the building, there's no crack, no correction, no, no corrosion, no water leakage. Therefore, Q3 equal to 1.0. If no crack, no corrosion, no water leakage, the adjustment factor Q3 equal to 1.0. Therefore, we have Q3 equal to 1.0 here, 1.0. Then we move to the fourth adjustment, deformation. By observing the building, no visible deformation or corresponding crack. Therefore, Q4 equal to 1.0. If no deformation, no vis the settlement is not visible and no corresponding crack, then Q4 equal to 1.0. Q4 equal to 1.0. Then we move to the next adjustment factor for redundance. Then here's the plan of the building. This is the corridor. And uh, as the exterior side of the corridor, there's, there, there are no columns. There is no columns. Therefore, no column at exterior side of corridor. Q5 equal to 1.0. If no columns at the exterior side of the corridors, then Q5 equal to 1.0. And Q5 equal to 1.0 here. And the last adjustment factor for short columns, Q6. And uh, this is the front elevation of the building. They are totally, just considering the first floor, this one is captive column, captive column, captive column, captive column. Therefore, at the front side of the building, there are totally four captive columns. At the back of the building, because of, because of the presence of window shields, all the columns at the back are captive columns. Totally one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven plus four, totally eleven. Eleven captive columns. And the total number of columns is seventeen. Therefore, out of seventeen columns, there are eleven captive columns. More than fifty percent of the columns are captive. Therefore, Q6, the adjustment factor, equal to 0 0.9. If more than 50% of the columns are captive, Q7 
equal to 0 0.9. Then we have Q6 equal to 0.9. Once we have Q1 equal to 1.05, Q2 1.0, Q3 1.0, Q4 1.0, Q5 1.0, and Q6 0.9. Then we multiply all the adjustment factors together. Then we come up with the capital Q here equal to 0.945. So far we have the basic seismic performance equal to 100.9, the adjustment factor equal to 0.945. Then we multiply these two together, together to come up with IS seismic index equal to 95.35 and IS lies between 80 and 100. Therefore, this building is temporarily qualified. And the design peak ground acceleration, 0.4 SDS, we already had the uh, design special acceleration for short period structure equal to 0.66. Therefore, 0.4 multiplied by 0.66 equal to 0.264G and the performance peak ground acceleration AP equal to IS divided by 100 times 0.4 times, S, uh, times SDS equal to 0.252G then the performance peak ground acceleration is less than the design peak ground acceleration and the ratio is 0.9535 therefore IS equal to 95.35 it lies between it lies between 80 and 100 and the building is temporarily qualified and here a reference seismic design code of buildings published in 2011 by the Ministry of Interior structural concrete design code published in 2011 by the Ministry of Interior. This is a video for Letter 3 and the link here and the English version here is just under construction and it will be uploaded later. And this is the video for Letter 2 the link to the English version the link to the Chinese version and the video for lecture one. And in previous lectures, we have talked about seismic capacity and seismic, seismic demand in preliminary evaluation for a building. Once we have the seismic capacity and seismic demand, then we can compare these two to have capacity to demand ratio, RCD, equal to VBS divided by I times SAD divided by FU multiplication times W. And we magnify RCD by 100 times. Then we have the basic seismic performance, E equal to 100 times RCD. Then by considering the conditions of the building with adjustment factors, Q, Q is the multiplication of Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, Q5, and Q6. Once we have the adjustment factors, then we multiply the basic seismic performance E by the adjustment factor Q. Then we come up with the seismic index IS. IS is the final result of the preliminary evaluation. And according to IS, we can determine which building move to the next stage detail evaluation with higher priority. And the video will be uploaded in this channel. That's all for this lecture. Thank you. See you next time. Bye-bye.